the Blink Drive. It was a strange and massive contrast between the black and gray hulled warships of the human Sol Confederacy and our golden hulled warships of the Iridian Empire. The stark contrast in size was more apparent than we could have imagined. Their largest warship, the SCS Supernova, was a fifth the size of one of our battleships. If I didn't already know the history of these ships, I would be laughing at how small they were. The largest ships were also the least heavily armed, ships known as carriers, whose only visible weapons were point defense weapons. I look over at one of the ships escorting the Terran fleet, the Grand Inquisitor. Our ship is six times the size of the five battleships that are escorting it. The human battleships are heavily armed like ours, bristling with cannons and other weaponry. I almost laughed as I thought of how someone took a shrink ray to humanity's war fleets after they were built. There was obviously something I was missing. Obviously, humanity has survived the last seven invasions from Council war fleets. Obviously, they have some advantages. I couldn't see it at all, though. Well, we would see soon enough. My High Lord! Incoming Sarasani war fleet! Right on schedule, as they said. All ships to battle stations, shields to full front. Human warships, stay behind us and let us absorb the first volley, I commanded over our comms. Hera Squadron, copy that, falling back now, came the response. The voice over the comms was feminine and made us all shiver a bit. Oh, by the voided gods, why are human voices so enchanting? My ensign spoke out of turn as he readied our shields. I forgave this talk, though. Oh, they are very enchanting. Their voices have this quality to them, and their females are... I said, waving my hands in front of me to show the curves of a human female I saw on one of their stations. I allowed my crew a moment of levity as the tiny ships moved to the back lines in our formation. Perhaps that explains why this occurrence is happening. What is this for the humans now, invasion number eight? Probably is, tight beam range on the starboard shield to 30 degrees, port side shield to 34 degrees. As soon as that first video of humanity's greeting to the galaxy appeared, humanity hasn't had any peace. And, uh, just so you know, the images in that video were very much real, I said as I commanded orders. Port side 34, starboard 30, set. With my commands followed, everyone registered the last statement I made. To the galaxy, humanity was a symbol of cuteness or a symbol of fertility when they first appeared. To almost all species, humanity's robust reproductive system was capable of interbreeding with almost anyone with little interference. A benefit of most galactic species being mammals. Humans are also exotic, being one of only two omnivores in the galactic stage. Symmetrical faces, short stature, and dense bone structure from a death world gave them an even greater mystique. Is it any wonder, then, that so many empires want to monopolize them in the easiest way available? Saranasi Warfleet transmitting in three, two, one, engaged, comms officer announced to all ships. Charging main drives, shields to full. Do you remember our battle plan? The human admiral spoke over comms. Of course I do. Absorb the impact from their main drives with our shields, then keep you covered while you engage. Snap to it, they're about to fire, I barked. I watched with a bit of amusement as I saw the tiny warships disappear behind our fleet. My attention snapped back to the matter at hand as I saw blinding flashes of light erupt from the front of the enemy formation. Full blast of tight beam laser fire from spinal mounted cannon arrays designed to precisely focus an energy source to a fine pinpoint. The purpose was to focus energy on shield sources to a specific point in the hopes of overloading them, a cheap tactic, one that my engineers were able to quickly overcome. The blast lasted 30 seconds. It was fortuitous that our shield systems overclassed most in the galaxy. In terms of weapons, we were outclassed surely, but a strong defense is just as good as a strong offense. It's how we held our own during the start of our own solar empire. Blast is over. Four ships disengaging due to overload. The sun-kissed Alavi has lost engines. Ready main cannons to fire. Focus all effort on flagship escorts. Ignore targets of opportunity, I repeat. Focus all fire on flagship and dreadnought escorts only. I barked in the comms to all ships. Diverting energy to the main cannon. Rear shields are now offline. Secondary systems shut down. Main reactor at full capacity. The chief engineer barked over comms.
This is the part that makes me nervous. I trust them, but I can't help but feel a little uneasy at the fact we have the fully armed warships of another species sitting behind us where we have no shields. We have no reason to fear them after all, but still, I said, thinking aloud. My high lord, this is logistics. We have compiled the data set you requested, O oh high one. The comms chimed just as I felt the shudder from the main cannon charging up. Excellent. Send the navigation data to the human admiral. He was the one who asked for it. I don't know why, but it's part of the plan. Ready capacitors. I barked and sat in my seat for the upcoming jolt. Capacitors. Charged and ready. All ships targeting completed. Guaranteed 100% hit rate with focused fire. They won't survive. Ensign spoke up as he read all the data being fed to him. Fire, I commanded. The ship angrily shuddered as the multi-gigawatt beam laser mounted in the ship's body whirred to life. Capacitors glared brightly within the tube deep inside the ship, a multi-focused array of laser emitters mixed with an array of hundred-meter-thick lenses focused the energy into a tight, focused beam of energy. The laser light blinded us for a few seconds as the streak of God's light and fury shattered the darkness before us. Moments later, all of the 41 ships we aimed at were disabled. Shields and power systems overloaded. They disengaged and left to the back of the formation. The ones who weren't so lucky either melted from the sheer assault or went nova due to reactor detonation. 41 ships are gone. We now have the numerical advantage. Full power to shields! I yelled out as I saw the enemy flagship charge up again. Shields full power! Angled deflection is at 32 port side, 29 starboard, the engineer barked. We braced for impact and the beam of energy from the enemy warships hit us. Most ships just ignored it. I noticed outside my window, however, the human warships had appeared from behind us and were using the light from the cannon attacks to sneak up alongside us. Their ships were casually burning fuel just next to us. Close enough in some cases you could actually see the scratches in the paint from dock maintenance. What the hell are they doing? I said aloud as I saw the top antennae array of a cruiser appear below the bridge window. This is SCS Europa. Navigation data received and processed. Charging blink drive, please maintain over shield. The human comms spoke up. Affirmative. Shield deflection, port side 25, starboard 27. Keep those warships in your shield's view of influence. I ordered as the attack dissipated. There's our exit point. All ships full burn. Ready broadside. The human warships barked in response. Well, are they charging the enemy line? That's suicide. It will take them far too long to close that distance, I said, wondering what the hell they were thinking. Before I could voice my concerns, however, the human ships enveloped themselves in a wave of purple energy of some kind, then suddenly vanished. Mere microseconds later, they reappeared in the enemy battle line. I blinked, completely dumbfounded at the sight of what the void just happened. I grabbed a telescope. I had to take a close look at what was going on and saw a close view of a human warship unleashing a massive battery of ballistic cannon fire straight into the unshielded side of the enemy flagship. The human ships unleashed the full force of their arsenal straight into the side of the flagship and then some kind of pods deployed shortly afterwards. They didn't look like escape pods, or at least nothing I had ever seen. Missiles as well, thousands upon thousands of missiles blasted out of every human warship, and within seconds another 50 enemy ships had their engines blown away, disabling them and kicking them from the fight, if not outright destroying them completely. We're in, don't fire on the flagship, I have men aboard. Damage is done, we are disengaging, the human admiral yelled through the comms. Suddenly it made sense, suddenly I knew what they did. I ignored the how for now and focused on the objective. With our opponent further disabled, we now had the numerical and tactical advantage. This was something that so few empires have tried and failed to do. Humans had managed to successfully develop the tactics and strategy to board an enemy vessel and directly engage a fleet's leadership in abnormal conditions. This would change everything, and we, we were their allies. A sinister grin crept across my face. I got back to my senses and stood up at my station. Ready all cannons to fire. Fire at will on all targets of opportunity. Do not target the enemy flagship. Aye, my lord, all ships fire at will. Fire at will. Do not target enemy flagship. 
Watch your crossfire. There are still allied warships in the enemy formation. The ensign barked into comms as the ship's capacitors shuddered to life. Enemy formation is collapsing. Left flank on the enemy flagship is routing, the gunnery sergeant yelled out. Do not shoot at retreating or disabled enemy ships. Maintain your fire only to disable enemy targets. Do not finish targets off. I ordered again, bracing as the main cannon blasted out its godly fire. Three more enemy warships went silent just as we received an open calm. Play that message! Ready fire! I ordered as I felt capacitors charge again. The screen appeared showing the enemy admiral on the bridge of his flagship with a human warrior aiming a gun at his head. This is the Marine Team Echo Squad. Your precious admiral now has a gun to his head. I'd suggest you disengage before I start pulling teeth. This statement took us all off guard. It did so to the enemy as well, and within a minute, every ship the enemy had had its shields down and lights indicating surrender now lit up. Engines died as the fleet gave up. Good dogs, the human said. Now, Admiral, if you don't want to be turned into a rug for my barracks bathroom, I'd suggest you fuck off back to where you came from and don't bother us ever again. Get it? The enemy admiral didn't even register and quickly screamed, We give up no more! as he ordered his ships to disengage. Within moments, any remaining enemy ship that could move immediately warped out. With the enemy line broken, I commanded everyone to move ahead and start rescue operations. The humans had already started doing this long before we even considered it, and some of their warships were using foam of some kind to douse several fires while incursion teams rescued enemies trapped inside destroyed ships. By the time I even considered ordering any rescue attempts, the humans had already secured our own ships that had been damaged in the fight. With a moment of calm to deal with casualties and damages, I called the human admiral. His image popped up on the screen. Hello there, High Lord. Something you need? What in the holy void was that maneuver you pulled? I asked, still recovering from the shock. Blink strike. We use a blink drive to warp us into enemy formation, blow a hole in the side, send in a marine team. Boom, victory. We've done it every time, he said rather frankly. What the hell is a blink drive? I asked, now noticing the other members of the crew were listening in. Well, a blink drive is like a hyperdrive, except instead of using the hyperlanes, it uses subspace to generate a warp bubble around a ship. This subspace bubble, as we know, is unstable. That's why we use hyperlanes for long-distance travel. If we use the blink drive in very short distances, it can be used en masse. In short, a blink drive is a directionally mounted miniature subspace drive. It's called a blink drive because if you blink, you miss it, he said with a smile. I blinked, coming to terms with the information I just got. Not only a stable form of subspace travel equipment that didn't interfere with the gravity wells of local planets, but also was safe to use on ships. I considered for a moment that if humanity were to stop being constantly at war, maybe they can better this tech for more economical purposes. I stood still and at attention. Well, Erm, um, on behalf of the Iridian Imperium, I have a favor to ask regarding your blink drive technology in exchange for our continued and permanent alliance to the Saul Confederacy. Go on, he said, stroking his hair-covered chin. Can we get some of that shit?